Uh, next up is Rocco Emilio. Hey man, I hope you're having a nice holiday. Yes, I had a wicked holiday, thank you very much. Uh, congrats to over 300 subs. Yes, and you are one of my main guys, thank you very much. Um, all time favorite guitar, name, make, model. PRS Custom 24 with a five way rotary switch. Um, I've loved it since the first time I played it, although this is currently my favorite guitar that I've ever played and owned. Yeah, it's probably not a surprise really if you've seen any of my videos. Um, name, this is question two. Name one artist that you'd like to play live on stage with. There's too many, man, there's too many. Oh, I reckon that for the reason that I said before about performance, if I was to play in Story of the Year, and it just so happens they're gonna be playing at Slam Dunk Festival in the UK this year, and they don't have uh, two guitarists anymore, they've only got one, so uh, dude, like, hit me up, I could play your stuff. I think it'd be amazing to play them because I reckon I could handle the guitar parts, particularly if I'm playing with Ryan Phillips, which obviously means that I'm going to do lead stuff. Um, I'm not. He's going to do the lead. I'll do the rhythm and he can just do whatever he needs to do. But, um, but it's the show that they put on. It's that performance part that I was talking about. That would be where I'm like, right, I've got to do this justice because these guys are insanely good at doing it. So I'd love, I'd love to play in Story of the Year. That would be... Like, that would be amazing. Um, or, thinking about it, like some massive artist, you know? Like, like if I played with Britney Spears, or like Rihanna, if I was Nuno Betancourt, playing, playing in front of like tens of thousands of people every night, and being, being a guitarist that fits into like an ensemble or a, or a band as opposed to being the guitar player, like I'm, I'm a guitarist, I make the guitar sounds for that band and have to put on a wicked performance and I'm playing with like really super wicked talented musicians. I think that would be a really interesting experience and I think it would be incredible to go and tour the world of that kind of band and it probably pays really well. So uh, yeah, story of the year, if it was a career move I'd want to play with like some mega world famous artist. I think that'd be really cool. Question three, what age did you buy your first guitar? In all honesty, I didn't buy my first guitar. It was a gift from my parents, um, but I think it was probably when I was about 14 or 15 years old. I'm now 31 years young. Um, so for around 15 years, I've been playing guitar and it was the MCOT Thug Raw PV Raptor. Number five, yes, non-guitar related question. What's your all time favorite snack? Yes. I'm a sucker for a decent steak, medium rare, with some Bernays sauce. Yep, you'll win me over if you have a steak that you want to give me. But you did say snack, and a steak's more of a meal, so... Uh, if it's like a smaller, warm thing, like, I don't know, like cheese toasty, I'd really fancy a cheese toasty right now. But I'm also, sadly, a sucker for biscuits, or cookies if you're in the US, which are good. Good to eat, but not good for my physique or lack of. So yeah, uh, but all time, if it was like my last meal ever, steak, every time. Stein G, yes, my man, Stein G, uh, the legend that is Stein G. Um, great job, mate, legend, cheers, dude. Thanks very much for your help over the year as well. Um, question one, what's the quid slash funny live experiences on stage? Uh, well, there's a few here, all right? So, um, I remember playing a gig when I couldn't hear the guitar. Uh, so there was, it's a band called 84 Millimeter and we were touring around and uh, we had a gig where we were playing with a bunch of bands and we were like second or third on the bill, I couldn't remember. And I had my dual rectifier behind me, but I couldn't hear it. The sound guy was like, you've got to turn the onstage volume down, which a lot of the time they do. So you can't actually crank the amp as much as you want to because what they do is you'll turn the amp enough to hear it and for the microphones to pick it up and for it to sound all right. Um, and then they control what you hear through your monitors. Um, back then it was whatever monitors they had. We didn't have like a monitor, you know, rig or in-ears or anything like that. So I was saying to him with the universal guitar up like symbol, I can't hear my guitar, basically. I was saying, you know, turn the guitar up. 
But what he was actually doing was turning the other guitar up in my monitor. So every time I'd be like, don't do this, this guitar, like turn this one up, he would turn up the other one. So the more I asked and the further along we played, the less I could hear. Um, which meant that the performance was probably pretty cool because I spent a lot of the time going from one side of the stage to the other. Um, but it made it difficult. And the last song of the gig was this song called In The Headlights. And it started off with like volume swells, delayed volume swell guitar things. Um, and I remember like, so I can't hear what I'm doing. I'm there playing these volume swell delay things. And I didn't use a volume pedal. I did it all with the knob on the guitar, right? Uh, and I'm, I can't hear my guitar, so I'm like struggling to hear it anyway. I don't know if I'm playing in time. I'm assuming that I am. And um, then the volume knob falls off my guitar, like the actual, like the knob part. This bit falls off my guitar onto the floor. And then the actual like part, part of it, like the thing that goes into the knob, forgive the very sexual sounding comments that I'm making right now that goes starts to fall in my guitar so i'm like trying to like do these volume swells my knob's on the floor <laughs> brilliant and the rest of it's falling inside the guitar so in the end i think i just like prized it out and turned it up as much as possible and just made noise um but that was like a really awkward moment because you know i've got all of these things going wrong at one gig that we needed to do really well and then my guitar falls apart quite literally and uh, there was another time uh, <laughs> Uh, I made some notes on this because I didn't want to forget the different things that I could think of when I read the um, questions. Ah, excuse me. There was another, I was playing with a singer called Kerry Kennedy and it was like a bluesy kind of pop rock stuff that we were doing and there was this slow ballad, right? And after the second chorus, it went to this bridge and it's like really quiet and, you know, it's got this bluesy kind of mood going on to it. That's like ballad-esque right and I had to do it was probably an E I had to do like this um, it's like like raked um, note and what I actually played was like nothing at all I'd raked into like this like awkward as hell wrongest note that I could have played it was like a half note it didn't even ring <laughs> and I'm like, we're in front of, I think it was like two or 300 people. We get to that point in the song and I'm like, yeah, just got to hit one note now and it's going to sound sick. And it literally sounded ill. Um, missed it completely. Absolute fail. Bunch of guitarists were in the room and they like, dude, you messed up massively. And I was like, yeah, I know, cheers. <laughs> this is, and this, right, doesn't, it didn't happen at a gig. So I don't know if this really fits into, um, what your question is but i still think it's really funny in uh 84 millimeter we re we always rehearse like we we're at a gig um for the reasons that i mentioned before like you play like you're at a gig and it doesn't feel weird when you actually get to the gig like you you already know how to perform and the rehearsal would be like this right we'd warm up like you know for 20 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever how long however long we had then we'd play through the set to get warmed up and stop moving around. And then we play through the set again, focusing on like our parts and making sure that we sound really tight. And then we play through the set, but turn everything down and work on vocals. And we'd go back and like tweak things or practice things like vamp them, repeat them over and over again, all that sort of stuff. And then we play it twice again, like we were at a gig. So we'd, we'd be lined up, you know, drummers behind me, that kind of thing, facing the wall putting on a performance. And there was a bit in uh, this track, I can't, I think it was like a song called Don't Look Back. And it's like this kind of punky, uh, post-hardcore, like rocky, very fast paced song. And me and the bass player, we I don't even know like how this became a thing, but uh, one part of that song, we always used to like run at each other and almost like head, like, so if this is his head, we'd like headbutt each other and then like force each other back, but be like, Aah. And it just looked like we were like in a scrum with ourselves. But this came after this like slow halftime head banging thing. And we used to like, you know, properly to be moving the guitars around and stuff. And he was, a, he was and still is a wicked performer. And um, we get to that part, right? And he does a head bang thing. And then we like go at each other and we're like this. And he like shoves me back with his head. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? 
um, and goes like this. Like, ah. And I'm like, yeah, dude, you know, head towards him again and he like shoves me back with his shoulder and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what's your problem? Um, and when we were playing like a open C sharp uh, chord for part of that riff, he points at his face and again, I just thought he was being cool. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, no. Ah. And what he'd done is he'd knocked his tooth out by like headbanging, right? But then he carried on. So I'm like, I'm, I'm there thinking he's just being rock and roll. And he's like, no, dude, like, look, I'm fucking missing my tooth. So yeah, that was fun. And we, we carried on. I think we had a gig like the next day or something. So he was old Toothy McGee uh, at this gig. Anyway, I just thought that was really funny. Like he lost the tooth but carried on playing. But I just thought it was him performing, you know, as you do. So yeah, they're, they're some of the funniest and awkwardest, awkwardest, most awkward things that, um, that have occurred to me on stage. Uh, another question, any plans on making a music video with Young Heart with videos from your live gigs? Yes, I'd absolutely love to do that. And we've spoken about that a few times as a band actually. Um, at the minute, Young Heart are working on uh, recording some songs and well, finishing the recordings of some songs, writing some other ones and finishing some, on, some of them and uh, figuring out still how we're gonna play without a bass player because we're, I've tracked everything. I tracked all the bass parts in Italy when I was over there in December. And um, at the minute, we're, I mean, I've never played without a member of the band. So making sure that the backing track sounds cool and making sure that we're all playing in time. It is sounding really fat. It sounds really, really good. Realistically, we've, we've got a couple of things going on, right? So we're planning how we're gonna do our live set minus you know one of the instruments but still make it sound massive the second thing we're doing is planning these video shoots third thing is that we're doing is working real jobs because we're all you know semi working musicians and we're still quite a small band so i mean if you want us to shoot a gig with like three people uh, two of them being bar staff and that be a music video then cool let me know and i think it might be quite funny uh, in fact, it probably would be quite a good video. Um, but otherwise, if you want it to be like a you know traditional live, but not live music video, then you might have to wait for a little while. Or you guys can all help us, like you know, tell everyone about Young Heart and you know, share the word. But yes, in short, I'd love to do that. We've so, we've spoken about it, but probably not right now. Another question from Stein G: Do you really think that I'd keep going like this? Like asking more questions, uh, yes, yes, I did, dude, and it's cool if you wanted to. Oh!